It's finally official, the M2 MacBook Air and the 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro have finally been revealed. Now you're probably wondering if the M2 is faster than the M1 and the M1 Pro is also faster than the M1, should I just get the M2, save myself a couple of hundred dollars as opposed to getting the 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro and get probably similar performance? Well, the answer is both simple and a little complicated at the exact same time. So one thing to keep in mind right off the bat is that the M2 is is a direct replacement or basically succeeding the M1 chip. It's not designed nor intended to replace the M1 Pro, the Ultra, nor the Max. Now, of course, keeping that in mind, it's also important to remember that the M1 Pro chip is still objectively speaking more superior in terms of sheer performance when compared to the M2 chip. Now, while I don't have any real world benchmark tests just yet to prove this claim, we can get the spec sheet and come to this deduction on our own. So for example, the M2 has a total of eight CPU cores and a maximum of 10 GPU cores, depending on which iteration you get. In contrast to this, the M1 Pro has a maximum of 10 CPU cores and a maximum of 16 GPU cores, giving it a visible advantage in core counts alone. On top of that, the M1 Pro has a maximum unified memory or RAM capacity of 32 gigabytes versus the 24 on the M2. So already you have a bit of a difference there. Whether or not the 24 gigabyte limit is artificial or not is an entirely different topic, but in terms of sheer specs, yes, the M1 Pro is a more powerful chip. Now that we've got the facts established, let's see which one is right for you. And that ultimately comes down to your use case. For example, if your plan is to open as many tabs in Google Chrome as possible, do some light photo editing, word processing, number crunching, watching 4K videos on Netflix or YouTube, well, the fact is the M2 chip is more than ample for your needs. In fact, you could still argue it's overkill. You could still go for the slightly weaker M1 chip, which by the way, will continue to be sold alongside the M2 version of the MacBook Air, and you'll do just fine. Now, if you have a more specific use case, for example, you do heavy duty video editing, like 4K or 8K rendering, or you're doing 3D modeling, computer programming, or any other task that requires an extensive amount of system resources, the M1 Pro has a visible advantage, not only because of its higher core count and performance levels, but also because it can support a higher amount of RAM, or unified memory with a maximum limit of 32 gigabytes. And should you need to go higher, you can always go with the M1 Max, which goes all the way up to 64 gigabytes. So yes, in those cases, the M1 Pro will be a more sustainable and a better option for the user. The other side of the coin is the fact that the M1 Pro and the M2 are actually placed in two entirely separate devices. So for example, the M2 is only available with the new MacBook Air and the outgoing 13 inch MacBook Pro. And by the way, the only major difference between those two devices in that category is the fact that the 13 inch MacBook Pro has an active cooling system, so it can technically sustain peak performance of the M2 for longer periods of time, and it has slightly better battery life. But if you're using the workflow or use case I mentioned earlier, none of those are really gonna be a problem for you. On the other side, the M1 Pro is available on the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. Now, there's a number of differences between this product and the MacBook Air. For example, both these devices are considerably larger, more bulkier and heavier than the MacBook Air. Now, in return for this, of course, you get a much better selection of IO ports. You have HDMI ports and various other ports that you don't directly get on the MacBook Air. On top of that, the display is more superior. So you have a peak brightness of up to 1500 nits versus the maximum brightness of just 500 nits on the MacBook Air. Neither of which is bad, by the way, but it is a dramatic difference. On top of that, you have a buttery smooth refresh rate of 120 hertz, which is exclusive to the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro. Not just that though, the biggest difference perhaps is the fact that the MacBook Pros 14 and 16 have a proper comprehensive thermal management or cooling system, which is absolutely imperative if you have a very heavy duty workflow. Despite the fact that the M1 Pro and M1 Max are very efficient chips, they are not immune to heating up. And if pushed to their limits for long enough, they need a good cooling system to keep maximum performance, which is something you exclusively get with the 14 and 16 MacBook Pros. So that's a 
another very important factor to keep in mind. If none of the things I just said in the past two minutes make sense to you, and you're wondering how the 14-season MacBook Pro will improve your Amazon window shopping experience, well, it's not. So you're probably better off with the M2 in that case. On the other hand, if you already know these things matter to you, chances are you're probably already leaning towards the 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now I totally realize there are a lot of other factors to consider, for example, pricing, as well as other technical aspects I didn't quite cover in this video. But the intention here was to kind of oversimplify the need of one chip over the other and to help you decide which one might be a better rational choice for you. If you guys wanna see more coverage on this topic or if there is enough demand for this, I'd be happy to make more videos on this. Let me know in the comment section below. Hopefully I was able to help you in your purchasing decision. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you hit that like button and sub to our channel. See ya.